All right, so it has been quite some time since we've done a 6.5 Grendel video. And the main reason has been optics. I put this ATN Excite HD on my 6.5 Grendel when I took my hog hunting trip to Texas. I temporarily put my 6 to 24 Vortex that belongs on this gun, I temporarily put it on my Tika 308 to test a few bullets. And now it's been months and months. I still have a few bullets I need to knock out in 308. So what I'm gonna try to do, we're gonna try to make a video here today and we're gonna use this beast to shoot with. I, I don't really know, uh, this may be a mess, I don't know. But if it works out, it's pretty cool. You know, we can, uh, I can take videos from inside the scope and junk. So maybe we can make a cool video out of it. I don't know, it might also be a dumpster fire. So the bullet for today is going to be the 95 grain Controlled Chaos from Lehigh Defense. I have had these forever and uh, just finally getting around to shooting these. I've shot this Controlled Chaos bullet in 308 and 300 Blackout and 223 and they have impressed me in all of them. So I'm really hoping that these guys might just shoot some pretty, uh, pretty sweet groups, man. The, the price on these guys is not too bad. Right now on the, the Lehigh website, a box of 100 is $36.63. So that's not uh, not that much worse than we're paying for most 6.5 Grendel bullets, right? So unfortunately, Lehigh does not have load data for 6.5 Grendel on their website. They do for most of the popular calibers, but you know, let's be honest, us 6.5 Grendel guys, we're, we're used to clearing our own path here. So this time is gonna be no different. They say to use, uh, let me pull up the site here. They say to, so their website says, for starting load data, please refer to the powder manufacturer's starting load for an equivalent weight lead jacketed bullet. So as I look around, I haven't shot any bullets this light, right? I think 120s are, are the lightest I've shot in the Grendel so far. So this is a pretty big jump downward. But from what I see, it looks like the 95 grain VMAX is the uh, most popular 95 grain option and what we can find the most load data for in this weight class. So the powders I wanna use are Accurate 2520. This is a new guy. I don't think, I don't think I've shot any of it yet. I haven't had it very long. Eh, I don't know, it feels like a full pound. I don't remember shooting it before. Luckily, the accurate uh, load data does have 6.5 Grendel data for the 95 grain Hornady VMAX. They show a starting charge of 29.3 and a max charge of 32.5, which is a compressed load. So I found that a lot of times this uh, Western Powders load guide, you know, that covers accurate and ramshot powders, their max charges are pretty damn hot. Like, uh, there's not much conservative at all about their data from what I've experienced so far. So, they show a max of 32.5 with the VMAX. I want to back that down to 32.0. And I want to shoot five different charges starting at 30 and going up to 32.0. They show a starting charge of 29.3, so we're cheating upward just a little bit up to 30, but hopefully we'll be okay. Hopefully we can get 32 grains into the case and still get a bullet in there. That... Uh, if anything trips us up, that'll be it. We may, uh, I assume this bullet is probably a good bit larger than the VMAX, but seating depth, I was looking at the bullet and where the grooves are and where the seating depth was on the Control Chaos in 308 and 300 Blackout and uh, 223. It was the mouth of the case right below the end of that top groove. So it looks like about a 2.260 overall length puts this right puts the bullet seating depth at right about the same place that it was in the other calibers which worked out pretty well. So I don't really know how yeah, how it will compare to the Vmax as far as how much bullet is in the case and how much case capacity we're left for, with for powder. You guys following what I'm even talking about? I'm just rambling here at this point. But so yeah, that's the first one. Those are our charges. That's the load data. This should should give us some really good velocity. They 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 show getting 2858 with the uh, Hornady VMAX. So if we can get up into that same range with uh, with the Control Chaos, I will be happy with that. The other powder I've chosen is uh, 8208 XBR. The Hodgton website does have load data for the 95 grain VMAX. They show a max charge of 31 grains. And just like we did with Western, I wanna go ahead and back down 
a half grain from their max. So we'll set a max of 30.5. And just like with uh, 2520, we will shoot half, half grain increments, which will take us down to 28.5, which puts us a half grain above Hodgton's recommended starting load. So I feel like at least our starting charges should be safe. It won't surprise me if maybe we do end up running into pressure with one of them or both of them, but got to start somewhere. For brass, we're using the same old batch of Hornady brass that we've been using. I've got this stuff all prepped and ready to rock and even got it primed. We're completely ready for powder. As far as primers go, I've pretty much exclusively shot CCI BR4s so far with the 6.5 Grendel. So I wanna just switch things up and I wanna shoot some CCI number 400s. See how they perform here in the Grendel. So that's it, did I cover it? Looking forward to seeing what these guys are gonna do. So, all right, let me get started. We'll start with uh, 2520 and start weighing powder. So I'm down to our last row with accurate 2520. I've been metering this out and uh, trickling it up. And just like all of these other spherical powders from accurate, I mean, they meter perfectly. They meter very, very well. So it's looking like we could squeeze a little bit more powder into this guy. The last charge was the first one where, you know, when I shook the case, I couldn't feel any uh, space. So this highest charge, if it's compressed, it's only gonna be very lightly compressed. So probably another grain or so of capacity would be available, depending on the outcome here. Our powder level is still below the neck, like it's, it's in the shoulder area is where we're at, so still a touch of space. All right, let's get these guys seated. So the overall length has been very consistent all the way through. Uh, I, when I first set my bullet seating die, I ended up at about 2.258, and it has been averaging just about exactly the same all the way through here, 2.258. So we're not compressing enough to where, you know, our uh, bullet seating die isn't seating deep enough. So that should tell you that there's a little more capacity to play with if we need it. 2.258, right on the money. So this has been going nice and smooth. There's nothing exciting here. So I will just see you guys out on the range because all I've got to do is weigh 25 more charges of 8208 XBR and seat the bullets. So that sounds boring to me. See you guys on the range. All right, it is time to get started. Got a target out at 100 yards. I've had to bring out my spotting scope because when we uh, zoom in this X Site HD all the way in, the picture's so blurry I can't really spot holes. So, like I said, this may be a uh, complete mess. I don't know, but we'll give it a try. I'm going to start out with. 30 grains of accurate 20 to 2520. This gun is a 24 inch Brownells barrel, Silencer Co. Omega suppressor, Magneto speed chronograph, Gibbs side charging upper, and a Magpul PRS stock. Shooting from my GG and G bipod and a rear bag. All right, let's see if we can group with this scope.
Okay, that group's not terrible. Our velocity looks good here to start with, 2746 with a 6.4 feet per second standard deviation. So let's move on to 30.5. Okay, 2798 with a 6.0 feet per second standard deviation. So good velocity standard deviation numbers, but that, that group didn't look that good. I'll tell you what we may end up needing to do. I've got some, uh, some ammo here loaded with Sierra Match Kings that I know will shoot a nice group. So once we finish these up, I might shoot a group with the Match Kings just to get a baseline of uh, how well this scope shoots with some known good ammo. Because I don't really trust the scope here. All right, our brass looked good, so we are moving on to 31.0 grains of accurate 2520. Thirty-one point Yeah, so I really did not expect to hit 2,900 feet per second. I thought we might get close, but looks like this next load is going to do it. And the, the brass looks okay, so I'm going to go ahead. Okay, 32 grains. Twenty-nine, twenty-nine, with a 12.4 feet per second standard deviation. So pretty good uh, velocity we ended up with there with the accurate 2520. So let's move on to IMR 8208 XBR. First up, 28.5 grains. Twenty nine point zero. Well, that group seemed to tighten up a little bit. Hopefully if this thing is recording properly, you guys can see what I'm seeing as far as the reticle. It's def I'm definitely not holding as well as I do with my normal scope. There's no doubt about that. This thing's a pain in the ass to get a uh, cheek weld and proper eye relief and look into this stupid thing. So I'm probably not doing the ammo justice, but at least we're having fun. Next up is 29.5 grains. Except for that one flyer, that was our first halfway decent group. 2894 with a 6.1 standard deviation. These velocities are kind of surprising me. I thought we'd be struggling to hit 2900. So next up is 30.
Okay, believe it or not, the brass still seems okay. I'm probably going to blow my face off. But I think I'm going to go ahead and shoot this next charge of 30.5 grains. Yep, let's go for it. All right, 29.79 with an 8.1 feet per second standard deviation. I guess those last couple groups weren't terrible, but overall that was a little bit disappointing. And I'm almost certain it's mostly my fault with this scope. So like I said, I've got some ciders here with Sierra Match Kings, with 123 grain Sierra Match Kings. I wanna shoot a couple of these guys. I've got a couple clear dots below where you can see on the target camera. So I'm gonna shoot these five, then let's get back to the bench and have a look at everything. So I've been sitting on this footage here for a couple days and was really leaning towards just dumping it in the trash and wait until I get my proper scope on my gun before I make a 6.5 Grendel video. But I get a lot of requests for Grendel videos. Just yesterday, somebody in the comments of my last video, hey, when's the next Grendel video? And I'm sitting here on this footage, so screw it. We'll just make a video out of it. If you hate this video, I'll tell you exactly who to blame. There you go, Heroes End. That is his uh, name on YouTube. He asked about Grendel videos, so it's his fault that this piece of crap is actually being made. The groups are not as bad as I initially thought when I was out there. Our worst group of the day was a 2.28 incher, but this one little guy way down here, screwing it all up. And then we had a 2.25 incher up here that was just kind of generally crappy. So the, uh, the Sierra Match King group that I shot at the very end there was just under an inch, but it, uh, those normally stack right in there. So this isn't really a good sign. Although the number's not bad. We did have one group up here under an inch. There we go. The 30 grain load with uh, 8208 XBR was a 0 0.82 incher. So even though the groups kind of suck, just look, I, I, I think they'll shoot better. So here's the deal. I've got half a box of these guys still left. So once I get my scope back on here in a couple weeks, we'll do another video. I'll give these guys one more try. Maybe we'll uh, try out some different powders because I just, I have a feeling these would shoot lights out with the proper scope on the gun. The ve velocity blew my mind out there. And I'll tell you why. So b both powders got up above 2,900 feet per second, 2,929 and 2,979. I was thinking we were going to struggle to hit 2,900, but now that I look closer, the Hornady manual, which I was kind of taking as a, as an idea of what sort of velocities we could look at, they cap out at 2,700 feet per second, but looking closer, they use an 18 inch barrel and the Hodgson data uses a 20 inch barrel or hang on, let me double check that. All right, actually, the, okay, so Hornady used an 18 inch barrel. Accurate, their load data used a 20 inch barrel, but the Hodgson load data did use a 24 like we did. And we exceeded their velocity. So at 31 grains, which was a little bit more than we shot, they showed 2840 with the VMAX. So I don't know, barrel link definitely had some, uh, Something going on here, but I'm very happy with these numbers. We might be able to squeeze 3,000 feet per second out of this guy. Oh, another thing here on the target that I found interesting. The Accurate 2520 started out with some outstanding standard deviation numbers, 6.4 and 6.0, and then it slowly kind of started to climb up 
as we reached a full case. That was a little, I found that a little bit weird. You know, it's a lot more common to see this sort of pattern where we started with an 11.3, covering it with my finger, 11.3, 10.2, 6.1, 5. So slight, getting, getting better as it goes. This 8.1 up here. So the last three here were all single digits. That's usually pretty good in my book. So this, that was interesting how it was opposite with the standard deviations. So I need some feedback from you guys. So the, I guess the question I've got for you guys is, did you like being able to see the, the scope view in this video? And would you like to see that brought to my normal scopes with some sort of contraption? So yeah, just give me some feedback down in the comments what you think about uh, a scope cam and whether I should uh, maybe integrate that more into my videos in the future because we can certainly do that. All right, I think I'm gonna wrap this up. A lot of optimistic signs here, good velocity from both powders. Both powders gave us some good standard deviation numbers to work with. So we'll give this bullet another shot later on, but for now, I will see you guys next time.